You're listening to the AfterBuzz TV Network. Now the largest new media platform on the web and your number one source for after-show entertainment. Very good, Buzz Studios in Los Angeles, California, presented by Maria Menunos and streaming live thanks to Akamai Technologies. This is After Buzz TV's Shaws of Sunset After Show. We'll break down tonight's episode and get you all the latest news and gossip. And now, another post-game wrap-up show for your favorite TV show. It's After Buzz TV's Shaws of Sunset After Show. Hey guys, welcome to the Shots of Sunset After Show for Episode 5, Fresh Off the Boat. My name is Lindsay Wagner, and I am joined tonight by Miss Michelle Renee. Hi guys, it's Michelle Renee here for another After Show with you guys. <laughs> <laughs> Today we are talking Shots of Sunset. We've got a lot going on with Reza tonight. We're going to have, I'm sure, lots of opinions tonight about the situation yeah. that happened. And we're gonna get to some other good stuff too. But uh, let's start with Reza and Mike first off and their little scene at the uh, hair restoration place because Mike's hair is not indeed, fa indeed falling out, but it is thinning. It's thinning, yeah. It is thinning. And that's, I mean, that's a big concern for a lot of guys. I didn't realize until I got a little bit older in my 20s that men my age are actually <laughs> dealing with this and they have to make the decision. Will I look okay with a bald head or am I going to have to try to seek out some really expensive medical procedure to fix it? I feel or like am I just going to have like a really ugly haircut with like a receding hairline? I feel like it's so much more acceptable nowadays though to be bald and that women find it sexy and think that guys look handsome you know, with the shaved shaved head because they're balding and stuff. I feel like it's definitely more acceptable now than it maybe was years yeah. ago. Well, I mean, what do you think Reza makes, I mean, not Reza, excuse me, Mike makes a comment. He's like, I would look super ugly with no hair. And I agree 100%. I, he would not look cute. Yep, <laughs> I agree. I don't, I don't think anyone on that cast would be a good bald person. Maybe Lily, but <laughs> even with her big hair, I think she'd be the only one that could probably pull it off and rock it. But yeah. I don't think any of the guys would, no. Yeah, his think. brother doesn't look bad, but. No. Yeah. But yeah, they're but, with especially seeing them with hair for as long as we have yeah. and with Rez on the mustache, it's just And it maybe it's this whole thing about like Persians being kind of like hairy and having a lot of dark hair. I don't know if that's like a stereotype. <laughs> Please forgive me if it is, but you know. I, I guess it would be, yeah. I I feel like I don't see that many Persian people that are bald though. Yeah, that the only one I've seen I mean, I don't really know when I see a Persian person, I, I guess. Yeah. I live in Glendale, so like there's but a lot I of feel, Armenians, and I don't I, see many bald yeah, Armenians. Ar yeah, I feel like even going out to the clubs and stuff, I, you very rarely mm -hmm. see, you know, that usually think that they have thick, luxurious, you know, like, hair. Yeah, very coarse. Yeah. So, dark hair. Mm -hmm. Sorry, but you're going through the thinning, mic. Mm -hmm. Sorry about that. Mm -hmm. um, I, I want to talk a little bit, though, about the parents in this episode um, yeah. and MJ's relationship with her mom and how difficult in the past seasons she's had it and the trouble that they kind of go through and today it was so nice to see like a bright light in their yeah. relationship and a little bit of a breakthrough uh while they were golfing and how crazy were mj's shoes she wears those shoes a lot i've seen <laughs> them all like i've seen them at least five or six times um, I don't know if they're necessarily the most appropriate for golfing, but she was doing a pretty good job based off what we were seeing. I mean, she's doing a hell of a lot better than I would have done if I were out there. So if the shoes help her get the, you know, the swing, the swing or the tees or what's, I don't know what it's called, but yeah, well, she, the hole in one, then go for it, girl. She was actually really good at golfing. I was impressed because she doesn't necessarily exude the uh, coordinated Mm -hmm. type thing. I mean, I feel like we've seen her fall down many a time. So I feel like golfing requires a lot of coordination. I've played a couple times and the first time I played, I was like, this is the dumbest sport. I don't understand this. It took me like two hours to three hours to play nine holes. It was just horrible. And then I went out with one of the golf pros and it was just a matter of like twisting your wrist or doing changing your body position. And it was a blast. It was so much fun. So if you know what you're doing, it's really it's nice. Fun. And she just she killed it. She was doing great, and then her mom being super supportive of her was really nice to see, too. Yeah. I th also thought it was really funny that MJ had a drink. It's like, <laughs> the whole time? Yeah. It's like, of course she would. <laughs> um, <laughs> but, yeah, it was, it was definitely great to see her mom 
um, just being so supportive and nice. And I don't think there was, beside the little comment at the beginning, whenever the mom like swung and missed and then she's like, we'll see if you can do better. I mean, that even was, it was a little bit joking and like jovial. So I didn't hate that, but we didn't see any negative comments from her. And I mean, no. that is unheard of for Vita or at least in the instances that we've seen her on Shaw's. So I think that's great. And if they can keep going in that direction, then they have like a really good relationship developing, I think. MJ said that when they do fun things together, it brings out a different side in her mom and her mom actually compliments her. So if they need to keep going and, you know, new adventures or whatever it is, finding fun things to do to build that relationship, I feel like slowly doing that, then the times that they're just maybe hanging out or having dinner will make it a little bit easier and less tension between them. Yeah. And I think it, it has to be activities where her mother doesn't have any experience. Because mm -hmm. when they go shopping, for instance, or they're doing something that's a little bit more girly, I think I get the feeling that her mom thinks that she's an expert in that her mom thinks that her mom is, you know, not that MJ is, but her mom thinks that she knows about fashion and she knows about makeup. And so that gives her more room to criticize MJ. Whereas if they're doing something that she doesn't know how to do, they're on an equal playing field. I like, I, yeah. I think you're right. Absolutely. So. Absolutely. Um, and Oz's parents, too, going through the, I mean, we didn't get to see too much of the episode was heavily around Reza this this mm -hmm. this one um but asa going into the bottling plant and taking her parents in there and seeing how proud they were of her um you know and realizing the hard work that she's put in and actually appreciating her was really really awesome to see uh do you know where asa got the financing now for that because as i'm watching the production of this i'm realizing this is a far bigger deal i mean we both knew that but i feel like it's a far bigger deal than i ever thought about yeah so where did she get the financing to put out Diamond Water? Well, I, I guess there were just investors that maybe uh, gave her the money. Not necessarily. I don't know. I would imagine that they didn't just give her the, the money for the product based solely on the Diamond Water. Mm -hmm. I would say that they maybe thought that her name and her being on Shaws of Sunset would help her sell the Diamond mm -hmm. Water maybe. If you and I walked into the investor's office and said, hey, I have this brilliant idea for Diamond Water, I don't think it would have the same effect as her, you know, going in saying, hey, I have this show that I'm on and, you know, we're on our third season and I have this water idea. So I don't know. That's just what I think. Yeah. I'm not sure, though, because I know we saw her like trying to get the diamond last year. Mm hmm. And she was saying something about her, how her investors had only given her, given her like 40 grand or something for the diamond, but the one she wanted was way more. Oh, so yes. she was gonna have to try to get more money from them. So yeah. She's got some silent investors that we don't know about that we yet. we don't know about. Um, but how cute was it to see her parents saying, oh, if you could sell this in Iran. Mm -hmm. I mean, she needs that support from them. And I mean, I feel like she's always had it a little bit more than MJ has, but it was nice to see them being vocal about it this time and realizing that she's putting in hard work and she's doing it and as crazy as an idea as it may be, the fact that her parents are supporting her, I think that makes it much easier for a child to go out and really pursue things, yeah. knowing that you have that backing. And I think her parents also like this because it's more concrete. Last season, um, her mom, especially, I don't know so much about her dad, but I know that her mom kind of was urging her to go into nursing or something whenever MJ was trying to focus on like a music career and like art, you know, photography and stuff like that. Yeah, and with them going to this factory, it's a factory, they can see the bottles, they can see these tanks where the water's gonna be. And there's just something that's a little bit more concrete, even though she doesn't have the actual bottles of water yet. It's something I feel that's more concrete about that than her going and having a concert or her like, you know, putting on an art presentation and saying, hey, this is my career. Mm -hmm. So I don't know, maybe that's why they seem a little bit more supportive this year. Well, and then she's got her, uh, Asa's got her concept for the art installation and it's Iran, Germany and America. Yeah. Right. And then that's how the story of her life, basically. And somehow she's got to have it ready in four weeks. But I loved the images that they were showing of her with the wall, with her moving her hands and stuff. That did look really, really it neat. Did. I think once it's all put together and she gets it, everything conceptualized, it'll be awesome. I just, yeah, for something she said that would take six months to get together in four weeks. I mean, what did you think? Yeah, no, I thought it looked really cool. And I'm sure when she gets 
Um, cause that was just kind of like a rough rehearsal, I guess. But once she gets, you know, fully clothed or puts on the whole bodysuit and does it, I think it's going to look great. And she, she has a way of really pulling her performances together. Mm -hmm. You know, when she did the concert last year beforehand, it was very like helter skelter. It was all over the place. She was, the dancers couldn't get it straight. Like she was acting like she was having, you know, panic attacks about it. She was even crying at one point. And then the concert came together, I would say, pretty well, you know, at the end. And even the little art show she did at um, Sa Homer, Sasha's yes. Yes, house or whatever, that came together really nicely as well. So I think she has a way of kind of making the viewer think that things aren't all together. But but she's got, she's and organized she, yeah, and meticulous. And and, yeah. And I don't know if that's just something that the production staff uses to mm -hmm. kind of add a little bit of drama but sure. i mean I, I don't doubt that it'll be amazing mm -hmm. yeah i think yeah i think it's gonna it, from what we saw it looks like it's just gonna be really really neat and interesting yeah. so um uh, all right should we talk about reza we should but before we talk about reza head over to itunes and tell us what you think about this season of shaws of sunset you can rate our after show we want five stars of course uh, you can also leave us any comments or questions you have and uh, we'll be sure to get back to you on future episodes of our after show so thanks all right so we have reza driving back from work and adam has called him to say that he's invited a neighbor over to have margaritas and instantly you can tell reza doesn't like this I mean, would you like it? I don't know if I'd be, I don't think I'd be mad. I mean, if my, I, I'm trying to figure out how this, how this would work if my. You would have to be gay first off for it to okay. work because. Okay, so what if I was living with my boyfriend and he, so would it be he invited another girl over? Yeah, maybe you wouldn't have to be gay. Never <clears> mind, scratch that. You would have to be living with your boyfriend and he would have to invite another girl over. Yeah. Another girl over. To have, uh, okay. All right, uh, perhaps I would, would be upset. flip a Perhaps I would be upset. He yeah. met a neighbor and he brings her over for my... At the pool. <laughs> okay, now Which that Which is already I'm, a little sexual. Yes. Like, I would have the pedal to the metal, like, <laughs> like, zooming through town. See, and to me, I thought at first, I was like, why is Reza mad that he's got somebody coming over? That's, that's kind of nice if they're meeting the neighbors, but now thinking about it and correlating it to what's going on, then, yeah, I can understand him being a little mm -hmm. upset about that. Um... And clearly, the second he walks in, there's tension. I mean, the guy's a good-looking guy. Sasha was yeah. a, is a good-looking guy, and and Adam clearly is into Persian men. So here you've got this Persian man that's young and good-looking and friendly and outgoing. So, yeah. I mean, Reza walking into this is already. I feel like he's almost like the dad in the scene. Yeah, I mean, I definitely off the bat thought it was more so a thing of jealousy. Um, you know, like you said, Sasha is very attractive. Um, he's presumably younger than, well, I mean, we know he's 29, mm -hmm. and then Reza's in his 40s. Mm -hmm. So he's younger than Reza. He's more attractive, skinnier. In better shape. And I just think that um, that on top of an already awkward situation, I mean, even if there had been a man that had the exact same credentials as Reza there, that would have been awkward. But then mm -hmm. you add insult to injury by having this guy that's hot and young, it, w it had nowhere to go but down. I, I felt like, though, that Reza's a little bit controlling of Adam. Uh, did you feel like what, that? What did, no. What did he say that made you think I, that? Well, I felt like the whole phone call, and I guess I'm going back to the fact that I didn't think it was a big deal that he originally had said, hey, I brought a neighbor over to have margaritas. I, you're coming home right now. He's going to be here. Mm -hmm. So I felt like it wasn't like I'm doing this behind your back, hiding that I'm, 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 I'm having you come over. You're going to you're going to meet him. You know, he's here. He's hanging out. Um, and then Reza just sitting there, just making comments, creating tension, and, you know, Adam saying, well, he's Persian and he's gay. So I thought you guys would get along. And and Reza just kind of not really talking to Adam and showing affection to Adam, but more so more concerned with making this guy look bad by saying, oh, well, you're, you're FOB. You're fresh off the boat. Yeah. You're, you, oh, you, you said month. You're, it's, it's months. And just calling him out for these little picky, minute things and saying, well, you really, you can't have been here for five years because the way you talk and stuff. And the guy's like, I've been here for five years. Yes. Yeah. Well, had you never heard the expression fresh off the boat or like fob or? No, I haven't. Okay. Yeah. I mean, I've heard it before and it's <laughs> definitely a very 
derogati derogatory term. But my question is, five years is a pretty long time, I think. Like, it's how long time. do you have to be somewhere to not be considered fresh off the boat? Who uses fresh off the boat? Like, would somebody say if I had moved here from Wisconsin, I was fresh off the boat? No. Or, no, I, I would I think have it's more so used for immigration. Okay. Um, I've heard it used regarding, like, immigration okay. from Mexico. Um, like I said, in very, like, demeaning, like, derogatory ways. So well, and this guy Sasha clearly speaks English. Yeah. So he's been he has been here for a certain time, and I, you're right. What what? How many how many years does it take for the, someone to not be fresh off yeah. the boat? Or is it is it less about the years and more about the I guess appearance their assimilation into the culture? Because um, Reza seems to focus a lot on the fact that you know this kid that he can tell by the way he talks and the way he looks that he's fresh off the boat. And the way that he dresses and the fact that he's from, uh, what did he say? He uh, Reza kept saying, I came from like royalty and uh -huh. you came from like this like horrible place. And it was completely unacceptable for me to be gay in my culture. And so I, um, a man doesn't walk around in booty shorts and a tank top. You walk around in uh, as an upscale person. Do you walk around in a, a f like hot pink suit in the confessional and with an orange tie and po pink polka dots. Yeah, I, I, yeah. It was just so so hypocritical. Very everything, snobby. Yeah, everything that was coming out of Reza's mouth was just so hypocritical, and it's just confusing because I feel like he, you know, on the one hand, has kind of used the show as a platform for his homosexuality and for him being this out male in the Persian community. Yet when he sees another person with a similar story, he kind of you know, pokes fun at him and says that he's too flamboyant. And it's like, but he, isn't that what you stand for? Like being able to express yourself. So why are you giving this kid such a hard time? And I think that's the the part that I felt so un annoyed with overall was just his, the way he was treated, he was treating him. I mean, he was super, Reza was being so immature and just making these little comments under his breath. And B, if you want to say that, hey, I came from royalty and I dress like this, well, then be a real man and be a polite, respectful man. And yeah. don't don't disrespect somebody on purpose just because it makes you feel better about yourself. Because yeah. he was being kind of a bully. Yeah, definitely. He was kind of being like really, really, really mean to them. And I, don't, I didn't understand their arguing. And obviously then Sasha is pushing his buttons mm -hmm. by making comments and then saying he was fat, which was absolutely insult <laughs> it was an insult but it was a very good comeback it was his, a good comeback it was really good it was one of those moments where you might not really have anything that's um completely relevant yeah it's like you don't have anything that's relevant to say so you just like hit below the belt <laughs> if you can and i mean good for him like i think that reza was definitely wrong in this situation um, so he needed to be insulted, even if it was in his own house. I, 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 I agree and disagree. I, I mean, this guy is coming into his house, so technically he should be respectful. respectful. But Reza completely started the whole thing. And what does he say to him before he says, and you're fat, but I don't say that? Well, and he gets mad because he puts his foot up on the chair. And he says, uh -huh. you're disrespecting my home by putting your foot on my Did you just put your foot on my chair or your dirty foot your, out of your flip-flop on my chair? Mm -hmm. And so I think that's what set him off. I don't remember exactly what he said it's before the, and it's the fat yeah. comment. But at that point, then, he's like, get out. Get out of the house. And Adam's just sitting there this whole time, kind of like. And as soon as uh, Sasha said that Reza was fat, Adam, you know, tried to. Mad. Tried to say, okay, we need to calm down here. This is, yeah, that's not okay. But Adam just kind of sits there this whole time. And if I was Adam and I thought that this person was just a nice person to bring around, I'd be like, Reza, no, 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 understand. Like, he's from here and trying to, like, make peace and bring them together versus just letting them fight. Well, Reza seems to not only have a problem with the fact that he's gay, that Sasha's gay, but he also seems to have a problem with the fact that Adam brought them together under the pretense that they're both from, uh, per not from Persia, but they're both Persian and they're both from Iran. Um, and to me, that whole, because he, that also, that annoyance from Reza also happens a little bit later in the episode. He's like, why would you bring me to a, you know, a, a Persian, Persian club. club? That coupled with the fact that he only likes white guys and he makes that he has a white boyfriend, obviously, Adam. And then at the beginning of the episode, whenever Mike is like, Reza, do you have a crush on me? You're picking on me like you have a crush on me. He's like, what part of I don't like Persian men don't you understand? 
with all that being said, it kind of makes me wonder if there's a part of Reza who is kind of ashamed of his Persian side, even though he tries to play this whole, like, I'm Persian and I'm proud facade. Because it's just too, too much that's pointing in the direction of him being ashamed of who he is and where he's from. Not and, just as far as the sexuality goes, but as far as his nationality. I mean, and we don't see, I mean, the only other main guy that we see in the show is Mike. And Mike, obviously, is a great dresser. But he's not, I mean, he's also straight. So he's not dressing, you know, in the, the loafers, mm -hmm. all the different colored loafers and, the you know, the multicolored suits and stuff like that. And I'm not saying that Reza doesn't look pulled together because he he does look pulled together. But it's... I mean, I don't know. It's it's really a fine line for him because to to be as open and loud about his culture and the way that he is, he literally put down. He put down his own culture. Yeah. I felt like the this entire episode he was putting down himself and that would come yeah. from either embarrassment or being ashamed and yeah. He was putting down his sexuality and he was putting down his culture as well. Mm -hmm. And I mean, we do see next episode, this is maybe like a prediction, but not really, but we see next episode that he kind of does have a breakdown and, you know, I guess talks with Asa and deals with it a little bit. So I think it's maybe an example of hurt people hurt people mm -hmm. and he just doesn't know where he fits into, you know. Things. But he was on a roll this week. I mean, he was just on a rampage with this guy. He didn't want to like this guy from the beginning, wasn't going to give it a chance, was in a bad mood. Then they go to this club the later club, on, yeah. and he's already in a bad mood. They're saying, why would you bring me to a Persian club just because I'm Persian? Yeah, and again, being snobby, talking about the club. Oh, the how... drinks aren't good, the, the soda's flat, and I don't want to do hookah, and look at the people here. Yeah, just yeah. being really snobby. Mm -hmm. I, I, It was just a bit... I don't feel like we really have seen that. Have we seen that side of him? That I mean, that to that extent. Yeah, because I was gonna say Reza's always a snob, like. Mm -hmm. But, um, not that I, I I'm sure that we have at some point, but not that I can recall off the top of my mm -hmm. head. But he was definitely being a little like brat, mm -hmm. to put Absolutely. it nicely. Like and I mean, even if. I've been in this situation before, and I'm sure you have too, where you've had to go somewhere because your friends want to go, and it might not necessarily be your cup of tea. You might not be having the best time ever, but you go because that's what your friends wanted to do for the night. You suck it up, you deal with it, and you make the best time of it. Not only was he not having a good time, but he seemed determined that he was going to ruin everyone else's time there, mm -hmm. that he was just going to be so nasty and negative that no one was going to have a good time if he mm -hmm. wasn't. So... I, I'm, he should have just you. left. If he was going to be that nasty, just leave. Exactly, just leave. But the, he couldn't have left because that was what created the drama, obviously, yeah. then, and seeing Sasha there. But I loved that MJ kind of stood up for Reza and was like, okay, Sasha, I want you to explain what happened. Tell me what happened. Tell me what went on. And gave him a chance to speak. Now, obviously, Reza wasn't giving him a chance to speak and kept... Um, and even Mike trying to be the peacemaker. And I thought that was that was really awesome of him and actually trying to shut Reza mm -hmm. down too as well to allow Sash to speak and then, you know, pretty much all hell broke loose because Mike wants Sash to apologize about disrespecting Reza in his home, which mm -hmm. I get that. But after what Reza said, I, there'd be no way that I'd apologize. Yeah. When his brother comes up and... Uh, he, Reza calls out Sasha's brother. So, what is his name? Solomon? Or something like that. I didn't write his name down, but yeah. I mean, they um, were both rude. They were both rude to each other. They were both causing a scene and being rude to each other. But that completely unacceptable. Well, he calls him a faggot. I don't know if I am allowed to say that. Mm -hmm. But, um, and, you know, Mike is like, who calls someone up in a gay club? Um, how about who, how, who that is actually a homosexual calls someone a derogatory term that's and using targeted, it yeah, that's targeted at homosexuals to like hurt someone. And know you're purposely hurting them because, yeah. you know, sometimes we, we throw as women, we throw around the B word yeah. or, you know, there are certain things we throw around, but I don't think there's any, sometimes when I s I don't think there's always malice behind it. This was straight yeah. up said to hurt him. And it was said multiple times too. Uh, I mean, I don't know. Like, again, I think it goes back to kind of a little bit of self-hatred that may be there with Reza in that he's still trying to figure out how to navigate, um, you know, 
the world with his status as both a homosexual and a Persian. Maybe. It was, it was definitely a really one of those scenes that was difficult to watch. Yeah. And awkward and uncomfortable for everybody there. And I think the viewers. Um, and it was honestly, it, it just, I thought it was childish. Yeah. And completely unacceptable. I was very own. proud of Mike, ex especially seeing how he had admitted to once being homophobic. I was very proud of him for, you know, standing up for um, Sasha, for even staying after Reza had stormed out, talking with Sasha, trying to understand his side of the story, and for actually, you know, voicing his disappointment in Reza. Mm -hmm. Because it's like people that are Reza's, you know, there can be a thousand people on Twitter that rip Reza a new asshole, as I'm sure there will be after tonight's episode, but I think that his behavior is only going to change when people that are actually his friends, like Mike or even MJ, let him know that what he did wasn't really cool. Mm -hmm. So I'm really proud of Mike that he, you know, Me too. That made control. That made me really happy to see, and then obviously heartbreaking when you see the brothers hugging each other and crying. Yeah. And I mean, it just... Obviously, they came to have a good time. They weren't looking for any sort of drama or anything and just ruins ruins their night out. And it's just, I said, Reza can't blame people for his difficulties in coming out and being gay. And I feel like he's blaming this guy for how hard Reza had it in trying to come out and be gay. And this guy had it so easy because now he's, you know, 15, 10 to 15 years younger mm -hmm. than Reza. So it's so much easier for him to come out and be gay. And I feel like Rez is blaming, like pushing blame to him because it was easy for him. Maybe maybe not easy, but easier and more acceptable to be able to do that. And they're there and they're humiliated by his behavior yeah. and what he said. I mean, it's just, I'm so surprised that his brother stayed as calm as he did and just kind of took it and didn't cause a scene. And I'm, I'm yeah. yeah, I'm happy with, I'm really happy and proud of Mike. Well, yeah, he said his brother didn't speak English that well, which I don't really buy that because his brother was kind of speaking good English. Um, at the end, after everyone had left and Mike was talking to both of them, his English sounded fine to me. Mm -hmm. But um, I mean, I just think that his his brother shouldn't have been brought into it because his brother had nothing to do with the drama. Like, you know, and that, and that was Rosa calling him out saying, oh, that's your gay brother. Yeah. And and I don't know if this guy had come out yet or said it was that was the big thing that he hadn't admitted he that he hadn't was gay. admitted it. And at the beginning of the episode, whenever Adam is like, oh, his brother's gay too, uh, Sasha's like, no, he's not. I didn't say that. And mm -hmm. it's kind of like an awkward, like, oh, they may have been having a conversation before the cameras arrived that he's trying it to shut it down, mm -hmm. you know? Um, I think that's an example kind of of how Sasha called him fat at the beginning. I think he took whatever information he had, even though it was not at all relevant to their situation and their argument, and just said, you know what, I'm gonna try to say something to hurt you, and I'm gonna use this ammo that your brother's gay, knowing that the brother kind of doesn't want to come out. Gosh. He's out now, that's for sure. Um, yeah, there's no going back after I mean, that. yeah, once you get on a reality television show, it's kind of what you sign up for, but. Oh. So, major, major, I mean, I, I guess it's gonna be interesting to see how Reza responds to these comments because he's going to have to do major damage control. Yeah. Well, he's going to have to. I've already seen on the Bravo's website that he has, I think it's a video or either a blog post, you know, kind of talking about, you know, being gay and mm -hmm. in, in the Persian community. And, you know, I'm sure he'll try to manipulate the situation in a way that has viewers potentially feeling bad for him and his situation. But at the end of the day... You know, I don't have any sympathy for him, I don't think. Uh, no, not at this point after how he, what he said and literally doing it multiple times. I just, yeah. yeah. There's no need for an apology from Sasha, in my, in my opinion, whatsoever. Yeah, agreed. When Reza apologizes to him for that, then I think he can say, I'm sorry I disrespected you in your home and made you feel uncomfortable um, about yourself. But I'm, that apology needs to come from yeah. Reza first. I'm sorry that I put my toe on your coffee table. Yeah. Like. <laughs> Ridiculous. Um, and so next week we see Reza and his demons and at the great gay pride parade. So we'll see how he acts there. Gigi's obviously all excited. All the boys are running around. Um, Sasha's there. And we see Mike and Sasha actually having another conversation. Mm -hmm. So I wonder how relevant 
uh, this Sasha's going to kind of come into yeah. play or if he's not. Um, so he, he's a new character on the show? I don't know for if he's sure, a new right? character, but he, I mean, he's around for the next episode. Yeah. So I'm sure we may see maybe just a couple more episodes with him um, to finish out yeah. the plot line. But uh, like you said earlier, with Asa and Reza talking about um, his life and his, you know, feeling suicidal and stuff. So I guess maybe we'll get in a little bit deeper next week into where those feelings and why Reza's saying and doing what he's been doing next week yeah I mean, what are your predictions um what are my predictions i don't know i this is more so a comment but i am glad they have kind of another cast member on just because the old drama that we've seen since season one is getting a little stale so i'm glad to see that um i predict that i don't know let me see um reza will have this whole meltdown with asa but he's still not going to apologize to uh sasha I think that's a, probably a smart, smart... It's an unfortunate prediction, but I, I, I don't see an apology anytime I, soon. Yeah, I don't see it anytime soon. I feel like they're going to really have to break him down and get to him to make him realize what he's done. And MJ's going to have to talk to him and Mike's going to have to talk to him and really like get, get to the heart of the issue and say, hey, what you did wasn't right. And yeah. so we'll see if that happens. Um, we really didn't see much of... We didn't see any of Gigi this episode at all. Just, or, just Layla and MJ fixing up, you know, the house the for house, the sale yeah. and sushi and wine. Um, we didn't see much of Lily either, just uh, the, her working on her swimsuit line and getting ready for that. Oh, and of course, teaching all of America how to do a selfie. So um, next week, I think, um, I think there's going to be more drama between Sasha. I feel like he's going to be more vocal about his feelings with Mike. And maybe Mike will kind of flip-flop and take a little bit more of Sasha's side than Reza's side Maybe. and voice that to Reza. So I'm hoping, I'm, I'm interested to see how that will pan out for Reza and Mike's relationship and where MJ is going to stand in all of it. Yeah. MJ, I, I see her just, you know, sticking with Reza's side, which is unfortunate, especially considering how he treated her last season. But um, I mean, I, that is one thing, I guess that's a good quality she's about her. She's trying to be a loyal. Friend. Yeah, she's loyal. But at the same time, it's only going to hurt your friends if you're not, if you're telling them what they want to hear instead of what they need to hear, mm -hmm. I think. So, and we do see, uh, I don't know when this is going to come along in the season, but we do see that they eventually go to, back to Iran. Mm -hmm. So I think that'll be interesting to see how that, their trip to Iran, how that plays into Reza potentially dealing with the demons Absolutely. he has. Yeah. I do have a little news for everybody on Lily Galici's blog, Lily Galici, blogspot.com. Uh, she posted on her blog about attending Gigi's birthday party this weekend at Warwick's and LA, and she even complimented Gigi, saying she looked beautiful and loved her new man, and she thinks that he's the one. She posted a bunch of pictures, of course, from the event and said they had a great night with great friends. So it's kind of cool to see her and Gigi hanging out and being in a good place, which is kind of what we saw in mm -hmm. the past couple episodes where Gigi's been taking Lily's side versus MJ, but cool that they're obviously still friends. So, yeah. and partying it up here in LA. Well, guys, that is all we have for today. Uh, Michelle Renee, where, the, where can they find you? Uh, you can find me on Twitter and Instagram at Michelle Renee LA. And you guys can find me on Facebook and Twitter at Lindsay Wegner and lindsaywegner.blogspot.com and Supernatural earlier tonight. Right, guys, have a great night. See you soon. From executive producers Maria Menunos, Kevin Undergaro, Phil Svitek, and the entire AfterBuzz TV staff, we would like to thank you for listening to the AfterBuzz TV network. To watch or listen to other After shows and post comments or questions, be sure to visit AfterBuzzTV.com. I'm Sir Richard Wentworth, and this has been a presentation of AfterBuzz TV. Buzz, see you later. The views expressed herein are those of the hosts only and do not necessarily reflect the views of AfterBuzz TV or its owners or principals. Thank you for watching AfterBuzz TV on YouTube. For more of your favorite after shows and interviews, subscribe to our channel here, and be sure to share your opinion on the episode in the comment section below here. We'd love to see what you guys are buzzing about. Thanks again. Buzz you later.